Come here, little dude. What? Oh. Ah! Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi, little man. Let's go talk to Bartholomew, and let's go see what Nanamo has for us. I thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. Yes, I've been very busy. The liberation of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences. And there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. What could Nanamo possibly, you know, la la to la la? And last time we hung out, one of the last times we hung out together, she actually got poisoned and almost died. So I'm surprised she wants me anywhere near her, honestly. I speak of Rauban and his future. Okay, we were talking about that before I came here with the rest of the people. The tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the syndicate and general of the immortal flames. Yet though he has come to call Uldar home, it will never be his homeland. He is a son of Alamigo. True, actually. I we were talking about that last time too, about like Rabban, like, you know, even if you lived somewhere else for twenty years, if you were living somewhere else, let's say you're forty and you grew up somewhere for twenty years, that place got taken over, you moved and then you, you know, live there for 20 years, like, which place is your home, you know? She wants to do a crime spree with you? <laughs> I would do a crime spree with Nanamo. That'd be pretty awesome. And now that she is free, I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her. Indeed, I had resigned myself to his loss. Suffice it to say, I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. So she's she's just looking out for him. She's like, look, like, you know, we've we've taken over, taken back Alamigo. That's where you're from. I know that you've kind of given up, like she said, given up the reins. But, uh, you know, like you should you should go be there. I, I love Nanamo. She's so nice. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. A doubt of what? Whether Rauban chooses to remain in Uldar or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. She's so great. She's just like, I just want him to be happy, you know? That's so cool of her, especially as somebody like in a position of power like she is. Yet, how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? Yeah, he literally carries you around sometimes. It is past time that I learned to discharge my duties as a sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes and hear the wind with my own ears. Wait, we have to escort her? Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Oh, we are going on a crime spree. Wonderful. Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous and I will join you outside. Whee! Ugh. My ankles! There was really no reason for me to jump off like that, but I just did. I bet because your Lala legs must get tired. True. True. They do. They get really tired. They're really small. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Oh, she was wearing this outfit when we met her the first time, wasn't she? Perchance you remember Lilira, the merchant's daughter? This is the persona I assume when I venture beyond the palace walls to observe my subjects unnoticed. Over the course of your many adventures, you have met people from all walks of life in every corner of Yorzia. I would make use of your worldly experience. Our first destination is Stone's Throw, just beyond the Gate of Nald. Look upon this process of tattered tents, these refugee camps in squalor at the mercy of the elements and Thanalan's predators both. The plight of the poor has grown more desperate, not less. As Sultana, the blame falls upon me. You've done your best, Your Grace. I don't know if she has. I haven't been here this whole time, so... Then, my best has not been good enough. 
From the moment I became Sultana, I found myself thrust into an endless parade of document signing and ceremonies. For years, I simply signed where I was told to sign and sat where I was told to sit, blissfully oblivious to what any of it meant. Yet one good thing did come from that ignominious, ignominious chapter in my life, for it was during an official visit to the Coliseum that I first met Raban. The match I'd been invited to was not at all what I expected. They had pitted the Bull of Alamigo against some dozen or so rival gladiators. Blinkered though I was, I would not stand for so obvious an injustice and demanded to see a fair fight, one man against another, and my royal wish was duly granted. It was not until later that I learned of the gambling ring which had arranged for Raban to die on the sands that day. Regardless, my intervention meant that Raban had but a single opponent to dispatch, which he duly did, and when he knelt before me to receive the winner's purse, he swore that he would one day offer me his blade in service. Surrounded as I was by liars and manipulators, I confess I dismissed it as a pleasant piece of theater. But as you know, Raban is a man of his word. Though it took him another five years of fighting on the blood sands, he amassed a fortune so great as to buy not only his freedom, but a seat on the syndicate. And then, I had my blade. Words cannot well express what the man means to me. If I am to be a sultana worthy of the name, I cannot turn a blind eye to the troubles facing Ulda. Already, many displaced Alamegans seek to begin the long trek home. These people will need shelter and employment if they are to survive, and this time, the Ulden treasury shall provide. Precisely where and how to allocate the necessary funds is, of course, another question. May have a visit to the Gold Saucer. Ooh, we're gonna go gambling? Its proprietor is a member of the syndicate, and he is one of the few who pay refugees a fair wage. I wonder, are you acquainted with Godbert Mandeville? Am I acquainted with Godbert Mandeville? I believe this is where we are to meet Lord Manderville. Shall we sit while we await his coming? Absolutely. My apologies, Your Grace. I have kept you waiting. No apologies are necessary, Godbert. My request was sudden, and you were kind to make yourself available at such short notice. When the intrepid kills or iron hammer and the sultana herself come calling, there is no more important engagement. As to the purpose of my visit, I would have your thoughts on how the crown might best aid the refugees residing in Thanalan? What advice have you for me on the matter of how it might best be distributed? The unusual circumstances of our meeting, and your grace's choice of companion, would suggest to me a desire for an honest and unvarnished opinion. I shall give you one. Uh, my advice to you is stop. Taxing Ulda's wealth to save Alamigo refugees is a terrible, terrible idea. It is a fine endeavor to support one's fellow man. I fear, however, that your stance is one born of pity. Your intent is to save the refugees, is it not? For all our potential, we are indolent creatures by nature. If unconditional charity is all we know, then we begin to rely upon it, to expect it. And then, we must consider Ulda's own poor and downtrodden. Should they hear of you spending the nation's coin, not to improve their lot, but to nurture the distant citizens of Alamigo, it is unlikely they will applaud your generosity. Surely it is not your grace's intention to foster new resentments, but to spread goodwill? That is such a good point. Like, Godbert, he makes such a good point. He's like, we have people living in the streets in Ulda, and you want to tax people to send money to somewhere else for people living in the streets when you're not dealing with the people that you have in the streets currently, in the city that you're living in. He's so smart. I love Copper. He He's such a goofy person in the manual quest line, but he really is like, he knows what he's doing. Indeed, the need support I pledge to the refugees must promote self-sufficiency, whilst also serving the interests of the people of Ulda. Correct. Exactly so. Such an arrangement will create a fair, more equitable relationship with the returning Alamegans, even as it generates the revenue required to win the approval of our your subjects. You have given me much to ponder, Lord Manderville. I thank you for your candor. Because are you perchance acquaint acquainted with any successful merchants? If my attempt at philanthropy is obliged to reap a profit, I would it would seem wise to consult someone with a knack for business. Hmm. Ordinarily, I would not trust any agent of the East Aldenard Trading Company, but if you hold this Hancock fellow in high esteem, I am content to be led by you. You may repay my faith by journeying to distant Kukane and speaking with him on my behalf.
Killzord, to what do I owe the pleasure? Or are you here on business? I'm always here on business. I beg your pardon? Her Grace of Sultana would have my opinion on how best to invest the wealth of Ulda? My dear Killzord, I have you to thank for this recognition, I'm sure. And I'm flattered that you came to me. Truly flattered. But why settle for a lowly apprentice when you can have the master? Upon masters of profit, there is no living soul better qualified to advise her grace than Chairman Lola Rito, a man whose morning exertions are set to fill his garter, garter robe with gold. Welcome back, Kilsrum. Did your merchant friend have any useful advice to share? He said we have to go talk to uh, uh, Lola Rito. With Lola Rito? And you agreed to this? I'm well aware of his standing in the field of business, but I had hoped to keep the monetarists at arm's length, and him in particular. Nay, I cannot live in fear of the man. I must learn how to treat with him if I am to rule Ulda effectively. Can I kill this man? Please. A personal summons from the science. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. Did I just motion for him to come into the room? Who am I? Just punch him right in the... Boom! I mean, I know he's not, like, ter awfully terrible. Oh. Oh, we're all... <laughs> we're all pretending to, you know, not be who we say we are. He knows it's you. You have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. Oh, wait. There. Would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? We've seen him without his hat on, haven't we? Is he blind? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollorito. But shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. <gasps> Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. Oh, fuck Teleji Adeleji. For real, though. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lollorito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> twould seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. I don't trust him. Like, I still don't trust him. Like, at all. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Ulda. Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. It is an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identify the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Revealing my trap card! <laughs> oh man, please tell me you guys thought that was as funny as I thought it was. travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. 
Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Ah, yes, that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. I don't even remember where the Saltry is, that's why I didn't even pick it. I thought it was just going to be wrong no matter what. I know the Saltry and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Is this, is the Saltry, is that the town when we were looking for, when we found that guy in the basement of that like church or whatever? Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course. But I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, your grace. I shall dispatch representatives well versed in the extraction white of white gold. White gold. <laughs> every last ounce of profit from its production. The loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment, whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as your grace desired. A deal is struck. Perfect. Beautiful. Uh, I fear it will be many years before I feel comfortable taking part in such negotiations. But I shall not complain. We have piqued Lolomito's interest and secured his invaluable expertise. Thank you, Kilzor. I could not have done it without you. Well, you're welcome. Enemo is ready to move ahead with her plans. Our course is decided. I shall return to the palace and have my ministers begin work on implementing the particulars of the plan. If I could prevail upon you one more time, Kilzor, I would ask that you convey the details of our negotiations to Commander Hex on your return to Alamigo. Okay. What have you guys been doing while I've been gone? I almost tried to save the game. I almost tried to save. Kilzor, you're back! What did Danimo- Oh. Sorry, are you allowed to talk about your audience with the Sultana? Yes. So, Raban says he's going to return to Ulda, but she isn't sure he wants to. Hmm, tell us something we don't know, but I'm pleased to hear she's committed to helping our refugees come home. First things first, though, we need to discuss this proposal with the Saltery's residents. True, we should go ask the people who actually live there. Hey, is it okay if we use this place and take all of your salt? Whiskar, how do you fancy explaining the Sultana's plan to your grandfather? I'd like to hear what Wa thinks of the idea before agreeing to anything. Right away, Commander. Would you mind coming along, Kilzer? I might need you to fill in the details. Then I shall come as well. Should Wa want wish to discuss figures, my knowledge of the nation's finances may prove useful. Oh my god. Alphano carrying his big brain over there to tell everybody what's going on. What manner of mischief brings you youngins to old Watt this time, eh? They want to rebuild the saltery, Grandad. Killsort, tell them about the deal. Alright, here's the deal. We want your salt, and we're going to sell it for money. Well, bugger me. We've never had the coin or the hands to put the place back to how it was, but it sounds like that's about to change. There's just one small wrinkle in your plan. It doesn't account for all the nasties coming up to anyone who goes near the shore. Don't worry, Grandad. We'll take care of all that. Commander Hex has been talking about starting up regular patrols, and I'm sure she'd assign me to the lock if I asked. You have some experience hunting monsters, don't you, Kilzor? Think you could cast an eye over a few of the local BCs and teach me how to deal with them? You just smash them. You take a big axe and you just... Ugh! Let's not waste any time, then. I'll see you by the lock. Alright, Grandad. We did the thing. It's now safe. I see you've returned to One Piece. Dealt with those beasties then, did you? 
I thought to myself, after a bit of instruction from Kills over here, like, once I've shared what I've learned with the others, we should have no trouble keeping the shoreline clear. Good lad. A fine young man you become, Whisker. A fine young man indeed. It seems Whisker has assaultery security well in hand. I, meanwhile, have discussed the next steps with Master Watt and completed my inspection of the site. Message from General Alden? Oh no. Wait, that guy's just holding up a box back there. He looks exhausted. Apologies for the interruption, sure. Apologies for the interruption, sir. But the general would speak with you at your earliest convenience. With me? Moi? Oh, is it time to beat something up? Yes. General Alden asks that you wait for him by the main gate in Alamigo, Alamegan Quarter. My apologies again, sir. Very well. Oh, look, the stars. It's so pretty. Uh huh. What's up, dudes? Apologies for the wait. It's okay, I didn't wait that long. People are screaming for the butcher's blood again. No sooner have we broken up one mob than another forms. Thankfully, all have been amenable to reason thus far. But it is no concern of yours. I mean, I guess. We must speak of the men Arenvald and his comrades apprehended in the peaks. By their uniforms, the captives were first judged to be Imperial troops. But after further investigation, their true identities came to light. I'm trying to think, who could it be? I, I want to try to guess who it is before we get there. I dare say you remember Yu Yuhasi and Laurentius, the fugitives who conspired with Captain Ilbert in the Crystal Braves betrayal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it would seem they followed him all the way to the wall. It was they who orchestrated the slaughter of the resistance fighters prior to the Griffin's infernal ritual. Were it in your hands, how would you punish these men? Kill them. Alright, execution is not the answer. We should just imprison them with Fordola and they should just, like, fight it out. <clears throat> you would spare these animals. Yours is a more merciful brand of justice than mine. In any event, I thank you for your honesty. When the time comes for the Alliance to pass judgment, I'll see that your opinion is heard. She beat her ass in five minutes? Perfect. Perfect. Well, that concludes our business here. But there is more I would say. Walk with me. Walk with me. Let's go, Raban. Take me on a walk. Take me down memory lane. That's what Nanimo did. I bear a share of the blame for Ilbert's atrocities. Had I openly supported the cause of Alamegan liberation, he might not have felt driven to do what he did. I mean, maybe. Or you would have also been insane, and it would have been really hard to fight you and him. To be fair. Things could have been different. And I'm sorry they aren't. I don't know, Ilbert was unstable as shit. But even after all that has happened, my homeland is free. With the Scions and the Alliance at their side, my countrymen have reclaimed what many thought lost forever. You're welcome, because I killed Xenos. Under her new leadership, I have every confidence that Alamigo will emerge from the shadow of the Empire and rise once more to greatness. Under salt, the selling of salt. Alamigo's gonna be built on salt sails. Means my work here is done. Soon I will return to Uldar and take my place at the Sultana's side. Will he though? What do you guys think? I bet he stays with Lise. Father. <sighs> I'll not deny there's a part of me that wants to stay. The same part that contemplated renouncing my rank and joining you as a wandering <laughs> That would have been so cool. But oh, grumpy face. I pledged my blade to Nanamo, and I will not betray that oath. 
I, I guess it's hard because like I feel like him and Animal have such a good relationship. So he's probably he's so torn between like going back with her and staying here in this town, you know. <sighs> Is this truly what you want, Father? Because Is it? Ever has my sword been hers to command, and ever shall it remain. Is Pippa going to stay here then? Thank you for lending an ear. When all the rest are clamoring for me to stay, I trust you'll send me on my way. I want you to do what makes you happy, Rabon. I actually want you to come with me on all of my future adventures and be my bodyguard and carry me around up on your shoulder. We may have a problem, sir. The group of Ananta has arrived at the main gates, and I don't mean the Vera. These are Kolyana, the ones that summon the Primal. They're insisting they be allowed to attend the council. Lise is trying to reason with them, but she may need help. Hmm. An invitation was extended to all the native beast tribes, but we assume the Kolyana would refuse it out of hand. We had best go and see for ourselves. Pippin, take command of our forces and be ready for battle. What's up, snake people? Kilzor, Raban, gods, it's good to see you. Ah, oh, the Slayer has come. Yeah, I'll fuck you up if you want some freaking messed up. We've not forgotten how you sinned against the Lady of Bliss, but we did not come here to shed blood. You claim to seek harmony with all who call Girbani home. If this is truly your wish, you will welcome us as envoys of Ananta. It is our wish, and you are welcome, but you cannot but we cannot condone the summoning of primals. If you want to enter the palace, I must ask that you first surrender any crystal jewelry. You have my word that it will all be returned to you when the meeting is over. We'll do as you ask. But you will not have our weapons. We are not so foolish as to place ourselves entirely at the mercy of our tormentors. I think that's fine. I reckon that's the closest we're going to get to a compromise, and we will have people standing guard. Aye, let them keep their swords. We have an agreement. Lead the way to your meeting chamber. Yeah, I mean, if they want to keep the weapons, but we can take their summoning stuff, that's to I'm down with that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm really afraid that something crazy is going to happen. Here we go. This is definitely a voice cutscene, right? People of Alamigo. I kind of like the, K the Kakirin. I know that like they're kind of bad, but maybe not bad. Thank you all for coming. But like bandits usually, you know. I am Lise Hext, and I speak for the Resistance. Among you are village elders, refugee leaders, envoys from the Ananta and the Kikern. You've come from every corner of Girabania to help decide the future of Alamigo. But before that, I want to ask you a question. What was the first thing you noticed when you came in? For me? It was that empty throne. We'll go sit in it. <clears throat> it has no one to sit on it now. No viceroy. No king. Would any of you like to take their place? Lise, it's going to be you. Or should someone else sit there? Then let's sit here, in a circle, as equals, and I hope, as friends. <laughs> We're just like back there, like... <laughs> Lise has removed monarchy as a choice early in the game and positioned them to consider a joint government. She's smart. She's smart. Lise is all grown up. <laughs> all things considered, I would say events have got off to a fine start. Okay, but what are the snake people up to?
And that is Alagana's stance on the matter. Thank you, Regenfred. Another vote in favor. Next, let's hear from Shanti of the Kaliana. Tell us, how do your people feel about the idea of a republic? Oh. Oh no. The Ananta wish only that those who dwell within Gear Abania devote themselves to our faith. You shall all worship Sri Lakshmi. Lady of Bliss, grace us once more with your beauteous visage. Of course. I mean, we knew it. Kill it, quick. Kill it. No, she's back again. We need to evacuate these people right now, or the Primal will make thralls of them all! It's up to us. Let's do it. I'm on it. I'm ready. <coughs> no, Rabba needs to get out too. Nice work. Yeah, fuck her. For real, man. Everybody else needs to get out. If you don't have the Echo, get out. Unless you want to be a thrall. Get up and get out. Yeah, pick her up. Let's go. Alright, now you have to deal with me. Wait, so we have to fight her again? Oh man, what the This is crazy. <gasps> oh thank God. The Kaliana would see us all in front. Then they're going to be sorely disappointed. We have the Warrior of Light and Arenbol to shield us. That's right, baby. I got you guys. Well, defend your guests and attack the primal, can they? We're stuck on the back foot. Uh, all right, I think I have an idea. Keep these people safe, General. I'll be back as soon as I can. Yeah, fuck them up. For real, though, We're running out of time. Come then. Who will be next to die on my steel? Yo, Rabana, he's fucking so badass. He's so cool. I wish I talked like that. All right, what am I supposed to do now? Let's do it, man. How do we fight her without leaving our allies wide open? We can't stay on the back foot forever. No, damn it. If I think like that, we've already lost. I have the worry of light at my side. We we can do this. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I really hope you're pulling your weight over there, Arnvald. Holy crap. Pump those little lala legs for real. Oh my god. Holy crap, dude. There's so many orbs. Damn it all. It's only a matter of time before we miss one. Yeah, for real. Well, 
What do we do? <laughs> Wait, does she get a redemption arc? I'm so excited right now. I just got so pumped. What of it? Do you want to kill this thing or not? I just got so excited. Fuck yeah, let's go. I hate her shoes though. Her shoes are a bad choice. We can do it. Prison shoes. She just came from prison. <laughs> um. Okay, I guess we're, we're chilling. Do not your souls weigh heavy? No, my soul does not weigh heavy. You shut your mouth. Uh. Oh, in the in the thing. Bye. Yo, she's going down, man. This is the longest fight of my whole life, though. By the way, a chunkla. Oh man, it's a race. I don't see this going well, actually. Um, I don't. I think Fordola dies before we kill her. We end this now. Yeah, yeah, Ender. No, that wasn't. Oh yeah, do it. Come on, Lise. Shoot her. Shoot her. We did it. I'm so pumped that Fordola came to help us. We, we did it. We <laughs> He's so surprised. <laughs> Oh, another memory. Was this Lee's coming to get her? They need you. I'm only going to say this once. The Ananta just summoned their primal in the throne room. My friends are fighting her, but they need help. They need someone with the echo, and by the gods, I wish I had it, but I don't. I told you before that you still had time, but things have changed. I need your answer now. You can end it like Xenos, or you can fight for Alamigo. Your choice. Is it... <laughs> Good for her. So she does get a redemption arc, like for Sherzies. Hopefully. I guess we'll see. She always seemed to be super conflicted working with Zeno, so maybe she'll feel better doing this now. Maybe these guys will chill out, wanting her to be killed all the time. Seven hells. It's her. The butcher. The butcher. She just saved everyone. Literally, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So it doesn't she can make like that dome thing. Oh, who's she having a memory of now? 
Oh, yeah. Because <clears throat> she can feel, because she's, she's got the same echo as Cryo. It's done. Take me back to my cell. She needs to go hang out with Kryle. You are not forgiven. Not you. You I will never forgive. But I will thank you. To start, for standing against a primal and saving us from servitude, you have my thanks. It's a step. Aww. Her story actually makes me so sad. I, I'm really pumped for like what happens next. Well fuck, Killzor. Arnvald. That was a near thing. Aye. Our send against the Kulyana would have been brief indeed had you not volunteered for guard duty. We'd be enthralled as surely as our sentries were. They must have planned this far in advance. Security was my responsibility, and I know how dangerous primals can be. I should have... Ah, it's my fault. My stupid mistake. Nay, lass, we were all caught unawares. We will take this as a lesson and watch our own more carefully in the future. Killzor, you and the Scions are to stand down. Get some rest. You've earned it. Fuck yeah! Ugh. Nap time, baby. Wait, why are we up here? Are we mourning Xenos? Stargazing? Thinking about Xenos? A fine spot to contemplate the heavens. And Xenos? The meeting is over. The envoys have chosen to instate a government modeled on Ishgard's House of Commons, a ruling body of representatives elected by the people. That's cool. is a fair decision and one which signals the end of my part in all this but I would gaze upon Girabania's stars one last time before I leave Garaban <clears throat> oh peace <laughs> See you later. <laughs> oh, hey. Is she going to tell him to stay? Don't tell him to stay. Let him make his own choice. Forget something. Why? Because she's also a Lalafell, and so it sounds like I'm walking back. Your Grace, I. There was no word. Rabon Aldin, you are hereby dismissed as General of the Immortal Flames and relieved of your seat on the Syndicate. Your Grace. Rabon, I am no longer a child. Stay here in your homeland. Work with your brethren. Rebuild Alamigo. 
You desire to stand alone. I, I understand, but remember what happened. I remember full well the consequences of my naivety, and thus did I consult at length with the most trusted advisor ere I embarked upon this course. A most trusted advisor? And what of me? Am I no longer deserving of your confidence? What trust can there be between us when you withhold the truth from me? Did you think me oblivious to the anguish in your eyes when you spoke of returning to Uldar? For years and years, we have trusted one another. Yet now you refuse to confess your heart's desire? I swore an oath to you that day on the sands. I pledged my sword. And it has served me well. But in Pippin you have forged a new sword, as sharp and deadly as the blade you bequeathed him. I will show you a Sultana who can wield every weapon at her disposal, including Lollorito and his monetarist cronies. So follow your heart, please. You are home. You are free. No, no more. I... <sighs> Smile for me, Raubon. I would have this parting be a joyous one. Thank you, Your Grace. It has been an honor to serve you and Ulda. Tomorrow you will serve Alamigo and fight for the good of all Eorzea. Am I understood? Yes, Your Grace. I will say, I've never played a game that pulls on my heartstrings like this game does. Holy crap. Sad, it was like, I mean, it was like happy sad, you know? All right, let's see what Lise has to say. <sighs> I have to read now after that cutscene. Such a beautiful cutscene. from Lakshmi, you two. If you hadn't been there, the rest of us would be worshipping her by now. <laughs> You're welcome, Lise. You're kind to include me, Lise. But we both know who did most of the work. I could scarce keep track of the battle, let alone land the telling blow. Oh, he's giving me all the credit like he didn't help. No shame in admitting it. The Warrior of Light has put far better men than me in the shade. <clears throat> Did I mention that I encountered the Sultana in the palace? It would seem her grace has come to Girabania to oversee the final stages of her relocation project. She was in search of General Oldin, and I directed her to the rooftop garden. I do hope you were still there. No, he left. It wasn't there anymore. Are you in the habit of gossiping about the affairs of royalty, Master Leveilleur? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not, Your Grace. I, I was merely informing my companions. Be at ease, Alpha No, it was only a jest. <laughs> 
but I must yield the floor to Raubon. He has an important announcement to make. Master Leveilleux. <laughs> What's the announcement, Raubon? You want to be king, Valamigo? <clears throat> As of yesternight, I have been relieved of my post in the Immortal Flames and the Syndicate both. Gasp. I'm ready for the gasps. <gasps> oh, no gasps? Oh, there they are. I shall be assuming my father's duties. And may I say that Tizona has never felt heavier upon my back. Fired. <laughs> Towards seem I am in need of employment. Mayhap one of my old acquaintances can introduce me to a mercenary company or some such. You may be getting on in years, father, but you'd struggle to find a band of sellswords who wouldn't snap your hand off. Your remaining hand. Oh, Pippin, you're so funny. Haha, <laughs> imagine making a hand joke, losing a hand joke to somebody who's missing a hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the bull of Alamigo need not be put out to pasture just yet. <laughs> Your grace has developed a wicked edge to her humor. And you, Pippin, would do well not to laugh when the future may hold the same for you. True, yeah, he could get his whole arm cut off as well. Replaced by someone more handy. It's his daddy, it's a pass. True, <laughs> true. So, does this mean you're staying? It does, I think. Aye. <clears throat> that seems to be the way of it. I would be glad to aid you in rebuilding our nation if you'll have me if he says welcome home Raoban Was unexpected, though you seem distinctly unsurprised. Me? Why? What? Either you are more astute than I give you credit for, or I am losing my touch. In any event, one thing is certain: Alamigo will rejoice at the homecoming of her dearest son. Yes, it will. I mean, I'm glad that he gets to stay, but, you know, if he really wanted to go back with Nanamo, I, I don't know. I guess I get, like, she knows that he would go because he pledged his sword, you know? So that's why she let him go, but... What are your plans for the rest of the Resistance Army, out of interest? Are we to prepare for Imperial counterattacks? That would be a question for the Resistance's newest recruit, a military commander with far more experience than me. What, the Bull of Alamigo? Uh, yeah, we call it an army. But the Resistance isn't really a collection of smaller, independent groups. And when Conrad passed his and when Conrad passed his command on to me, that authority only extended to the Freedom Fighters based in Rogler's Reach. He just happened to be serving as a Resistance spokesman, spokesman at the time, and needed someone to take over the role while everything was in disarray. But that time has passed. When I speak with the other leaders about reforming the army under the new government, I'll be nominating Raban as the overall commander of our forces. He has more experience than the rest of us put together, and we stand to learn a lot from him. True. True. Indeed, he is in all respects the ideal choice, assuming he accepts the post. Alamigo will have added a formidable weapon to its arsenal. And given the progress of Nanimo's resettlement initiative, I see great cause for hope. The seeds which we so carefully sowed have begun to quicken, my friends. I like that. We tend to our promises, and watch as Alamigo blooms. Gosetsu! I do give thanks to the Kami that my makeshift raft withstood the fury of the seas. But there, 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 their generosity ended. Without coins in our pockets for new attire, we are doomed to look so much jetsam. Oh, woe betide the poor man in a city of rich merchants. I mean, somebody's 
Gotta recognize you there, right? <laughs> are they pals? These dango are delicious. Will you have one? Hmm? More sweetbreads? I surrender my blade to secure what few coins we have. Do not want them though? They look pretty good. It does look really good though. I don't know what it is, but I would I would try it for sure. It's shock, yeah. <laughs> Dango are delicious, are they? I've never had them before. Bah! It is like talking to a child. She's really enjoying it though. She's freaking going to town. Why fate saddled me with this burden, I shall never know. But I'm alive and I must return to my master's side. Ian, right? Come, Suyu. He calls her Suyu? Oh, that's so cute. Come, Suyu. We shall find a ship to carry us across the Ruby Sea. Does she, like, not remember? And he just happens to be, like, the only person around? I mean, I, know, I hopefully we'll, we'll learn, right? I mean, I assume that's why they're showing us, because we'll eventually see them, but... Meanwhile... In the Imperial Palace. Oh no, bad guys. The Garleans. Have you read the reports? First Doma, then Alamigo, and Lord Xenos put to the sword? Do not believe everything you read. I hear the Viceroy was merely wounded, and that he has already returned to the capital. Naturally, the savage beat... The savages beat their chests and boast loudly of taking his head, regardless. Nay, Lord Xenos lives? Wait. What? Deplorable that our own officers should be fooled by Eorzean misinformation. No, he's dead. Small wonder the provinces have begun rising up in rebellion. We must prepare an official and above all accurate announcement to quell these pernicious rumors. He's definitely dead. They would wage war with empty words? Let them produce the Viceroy's remains then. We shall soon put the lie to their claims. 